The fastest way to powerful techno is through sound design. A good example is the Silent Call EP by Sam. When you listen to it, it seems like there are not lots of sounds around the percussion, yet each track sounds full. Today, we will prioritize quality over quantity and recreate the main lead from the Nothing Lasts Forever track. This and many more quality serum presets come from my upcoming Rave Techno preset pack. Join the simple contest and win the full version containing over 40 serum presets, percussion samples and MIDI melodies. After loading the initial serum preset, I immediately changed the wavetable and the oscillator A to saw wave. I'd like to throw a melody using chords, where the sound coming from each note is not equally loud. That means I need to use the MIDI note velocity parameter to control the volume. By default, none of serum parameters is influenced by note velocity. I will change that by dragging the velocity tile towards the oscillator A volume knob. The modulation is assigned and, judging by the curve in the velocity window, the relation between the velocity and volume will be linear. I have to change yet the modulation range, so the velocity of zero corresponds to zero volume. I drag the volume knob all the way down and increase the modulation range by dragging the blue halo icon. Now a full melody can be played. From the oscillator A, we want a Reese based sound. Three weeks ago, from my Clank and Sled tutorial, you learned that for a Reese sound, we need to add unisono voices and detune them. All these things are done with these three controls in the oscillator window. Our wrist sound is too bright and we would like to get rid of the low end too. I will start by rolling off the low end. Usually I would remove the first harmonic that gives us the lowest fundamental frequency of the sound in the Serum Wavetable Editor. But because I have a melody with some of the notes higher by an octave or two from the lowest one, removing the first harmonic would result in an empty sound. Instead, I will use a high pass filter in the filter section. We can also use this section to add movement to the bass. I will rhythmically boost lower frequencies with the filter resonance. Notice that once I increase the resonance, the mid and high frequencies become quieter. That doesn't sound cool. To fix that, I use the FAT control. Now, adjusting the filter resonance affects only the left part of the curve. The last thing is to automate the resonance knob with the LFO. I drag the LFO tile towards the resonance, adjust the modulation range, and throw an appropriate modulation curve. The high end will be cut using a filter in the effects section. I choose a more aggressive and steeper low pass filter and adjust the cutoff control. We will make the sound more interesting with Glide. Glide is a smooth pitch change that happens whenever MIDI notes and the melody overlap. Since our melody consists of chords, this overlap is always present. To introduce the Glide and adjust its duration, turn up the portamento knob. To 
make the glide sound more interesting, I will turn on the scaled switch. This adjusts the glide time depending on the distance between the source and destination MIDI notes. The glide should be more unpredictable now. It's time to use the effects section to make our reefs powerful. At first, we will use heavy distortion to get all the fills we need. Such distortion usually adds lots of high frequencies, so we will place this effect before the filter to keep the sound muffled. Among all different distortion algorithms, I pick the zero square one and adjust it to fry the sound with the drive knob. That distortion gave us more low frequencies as well. We can use the internal filter to remove them. It's important to place this filter after the distortion with the post switch. I will set the filter to the high pass one and adjust it with both frequency and Q controls. The second important effect is the equalizer. I will use it to make the lead more crunchy and less muddy. The equalizer will be placed after the distortion because I don't want it to change the way the distortion works. To get the crunchy sound, I will boost the 2 kHz area. I will use a lower Q value to make the equalization more natural. A wide boost sounds more transparent than a narrow one. The second filter will cut the mud from the sound. Here I will aim for the frequency area from 200 to 300 Hz. We want to make a precise cut, so here the Q value will be higher. In the original track, certain parts of the lead are more emphasized. Unfortunately, I can't use a bit crusher to do that, but I have different tricks up my sleeve. The first one will be a multiband compressor I already taught you using in my previous Clank and Slayer tutorial. If you haven't seen this video, please watch at least this part to gain a fuller understanding of the multiband compressor in Serum. In Shortcut, I am using it to bring out more details in the high-end area. This will make the sound sharper. I dial the amount of that sharpness with threshold and ratio. Our lead sound is continuous, so adjusting the attack and release is irrelevant. At last, I slightly reduce the volume of the high and mid frequencies to not make the lead too bright after the compression. The lead after compression is quieter. To fix it up a bit, I will use the gain knob.
Now I will use another LFO to turn on and off this compressor rhythmically. The compressor will be active only during the last beat in the bar. So I adjust the LFO rate and create an appropriate curve to get the right modulation. I assign this LFO to the mix control and the compressor and set the modulation range. Let's compare the sound with and without the automated multiband compressor. Another trick will use the same LFO. The third LFO will also rhythmically open up the low pass filter in the effects section. I assign the LFO to the cut off knob and set the modulation range. I want to add a subtle background to the sound, but instead of using a reverb that would make the sound too bloated, I will use a short delay. I place it in the beginning of our chain. This will make the echo repetitions distorted as well, because the delay is before the distortion, making the sound more coherent. At first, I set the mix to make these repetitions loud enough. To change the rhythm, I will set a faster delay time and fine-tune the feedback knob to set the right delay duration. The delay can't bloat the whole sound, so we need to cut the lower frequencies from delay repetitions. For that, I will adjust the internal filter to make it work like a high-pass filter. Let's listen to the lead sound with and without the delay. Let's simulate the sidechain compression that rhythmically ducks the lead sound. I will use another LFO with a simple sew up curve. This LFO will be attached to the volume knob that is after all the effects. The knob is in the filter effect in the effects section. Almost all serum effects have an output volume knob that reveals when you click the mix tab. That's the place where I assign the LFO and set the modulation range. I want this modulation to be unidirectional. In other words, I want to precisely adjust the beginning and the end of the modulation range. Currently, to set the modulation range, I would have to repeatedly adjust the level knob and the blue halo around it. That's the bidirectional modulation type that is good for, for example, filter modulations. I can click the level knob with the left alt and shift keys held to change the modulation to unidirectional that will be more appropriate for volume adjustments. At last, let's visit the global tab. Here I will reduce the width of the whole lead by adjusting the unisono width for the oscillator A. The lead is finished. Again, for more presets like that one, visit my preset pack website, join the contest by downloading the free version of it and win the full product at the day of its premiere.